Hi everybody, welcome to the channel. Today Terry and I are going to be showing you how to install a power stop brake system on my wife's C7 Corvette. So guys, today we're going to be replacing the rotors as well as the brake pads uh, from Power Stop Brakes. Now, they're sponsoring our channel today. They've provided the brakes for us. Um, and one of the other things that we're going to be doing is I'm going to be uh, cleaning up the, uh, the calipers on the car and I'm going to be putting some uh, decorative, uh, like a, a decal that's in red on here to kind of bring the caliper out. Now this is an attempt to see how it's going to look. Um, it may not. It may look great. It may not when we're done. I'm not sure. So, but you'll be able to see what that looks like uh, the before and the after. I'm going to be cleaning that all up, and then we'll show you what it looks like. Um, Jennifer's already made it very clear that she wants me to be doing uh, some new calipers. She wants to do some blue, like the like the car. Um, so that may very well be happening sometime in the summertime, but um, until then, we're going to try something a little bit cheaper for right now. But anyway, uh, sit back and relax. We're going to show you how this is done. We're going to go through the whole process of, uh, of taking, taking these off and replacing them, and that way you'll know exactly how to do it when it comes time for you to put yours on. Um, the one thing before we jump into the video, the, and this is really the main reason that we're replacing these, is that this car only has 36,000 miles on it. It's a 2016. Um, and you can see here in the picture, hopefully you guys can see that, that this, this uh, rotor itself, it's in great shape. The pads are really, really thick still. But the biggest problem that we've got is that I can drive this car 25 feet and I got brake dust. Now, I know I talked to you about this before when you saw me do a Grand Sport with the, uh, with the chrome wheels and you saw what it looked like and also on my car when we've, we've done chrome wheels. But I didn't realize just exactly how much or how terrible it looks on black. Uh, Jennifer has black wheels um, as we've already taken them off, but I'm going to show you some before and afters of what they look like nice and shiny and what they look like after they've only been driven. I, I, they were clean when I left, the, left my house this morning. I literally drove about 60 miles on these and they are just hideous. So um, the, the power stop brakes, they don't have that. They resist that, that uh, dusting. Um, so you can drive a long time before you're gonna have to deal with it and it doesn't leave all this really, really bad you know, dust and debris on the on the inside of the wheels. It's going to make it so much easier for me to keep clean. Uh, I know I, I made the joke when we bought the car. I told Jennifer, you know, you're going to have to clean this thing if you want these black wheels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. Well, guess what? She's never cleaned ever once. Um, so it, it's always me, right? So so anyway, uh, she gets to drive it. I get to clean it. So. I, this is doing this more for me than anything, but it's just to make sure that I don't have this dusting and it's, they stay clean. So when it comes time I go to a car show, I don't have this to deal with. So um, while, uh, while we've got it off, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll, I'll take some video of what the wheels look like before I clean them, and then I'll take some after I get them cleaned up so you can see the difference of what it should look like. Uh, those of you that have cleaned your wheels on a regular basis or know, that uh, on a chrome rim, you have, when you get that dust, it just looks kind of dusty or not as shiny. But when you get that on a black rim, it almost appears like it's white dirt, and so, uh, or gray dirt. So it really, really shows up even more so on the black. So, so anyway, that's why we're going ahead and we're changing these. So we're going to jump into the video now, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to show you how it's done. So also here, before we start to replace these and get this all nice and cleaned up, you're going to see, look at all of the dust that's all over these, these rotors, all over the caliper there. So before I put this all back together, I'll show you what it looks like all nice and pretty and what it'll end up staying like once we get, get it cleaned up and get the, the uh, new power stop pads on. Okay, before we get started, I just want to show you what we've got here in the box. 
Um, we've got the Power Stop Extreme uh, Street Performance Brake Pads for the front and the back. You can notice that the front pads are much larger. You can see that box and the, the smaller box is for the rears. And um, I'm going to go ahead and we'll just open these little guys up. And it comes with all the hardware you're going to need as well as the silicone. And then the, the pads are right there. Okay, so this is your back, your back set. And we're going to get those out of the way here. And then here's our front ones. And it comes with, again, all the spring hardware you're going to need, as well as the, as the grease that you're going to need, and these really great looking pads. They just look really nice. So, um, so anyway, I just wanted to make sure that you guys saw what we're doing. These are the Z Z26 package. Um, they do make a Z23 package, which I think is they can use those for uh, tracking the car, um, doing, you know, if you're really, really um, uh, doing a lot more track driving than you are street. This is a combination uh, carbon, carbon ceramic pad that works, uh, you know, to be able to do your occasional tracking as well as regular street performance. So, um, and then on top of that, we're doing the uh, the power stop uh, drilled and slotted uh, rotors. Now, when you get those, uh, that's a, a rear one. They are marked, so you can't screw that up. We've got our our passenger rear here, and our our uh, driver's side over there, as well as we've got our other driver's side on that one over there, as well over there right by Terry uh, is the the uh, passenger front. So you can't get those screwed up. So anyway, we've got those got those all set in place, and now we're gonna go ahead and jump right into the video. First thing you wanna do is take the, the brake pads out. It's a lot easier to do because of them being stationary, and then you can just spread them with your fingers to get the pucks back in, and then we'll just take all of this off. We're gonna take these pins out. There's little drift pins. This little tool here has got a little, I don't know if you can see it, it's awful small. It's got a little dimple in it. That dimple fits in here so that you're not banging all the way around here like it. This here, you just put it on here in that little dimple and just, and get it past the little, the depth of the hole, both of them. So this now take way a drift, drift pin like this or any, anything that'll fit in the hole and use it to knock the pin back through. The pin's putting it out, yeah. So guys, what he's using there is he used that one with the dimple in it so that way your, your punch didn't go and scratch your caliper, scratch the paint up on it. Okay, once you, once you get that in there, now, now it, if you've got just a piece of rod, just like a piece of welding rod or anything that's kind of stiff, to get this pin out, once it gets past there, you see, you just kind of stick it in here, push it through there, and use it by pushing on the spring to release it, and just use this to push it out. Now the bottom one is basically the same way, but this one here should be real easy because there's no pressure on the brake or anything. It should just slide out. Okay, when you get the pins out and the springs out of it, you can, it's easy just to take the caliper and squeeze it. And what you're doing is you're pushing the pucks back inside the caliper. What that does is when you take the old pads out, it gives them room to put the new ones in. So you Once you get them pushed back like that, you just pull them out. So just by pressing them back, you're compressing the pistons. And, yeah. pu and push them back in. Okay. Now I want to take off the caliper so that we can take the rotor off. Okay, these two bolts right here, there's one here and there's one up here. So they hold the caliper on. What you need to do is take a breaker bar because they're tight. They're probably 125, 135 pounds torque. And you just break them loose. I need to break the other one loose. Okay. Then I'm going to put a ratchet on it so it's just a little easier to take them bolts out.
You can do this with power tools if you like. Me, I'm just kind of old school and use my hands. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll go for the top one up here. Same thing. Make sure that you, as you're taking this off, kind of hold the caliper because you don't want it just dropping down. You don't want to do anything to the brake line itself. Now let's see if we can get that out of there. Yeah. Take the caliper off and take and set it up right in here. Be gentle with it, but it'll set right there while you're doing the rest of the work. I have a little torque screw right here that you want to take out. That's what holds just the line everything up just to hold it on. So in order to do that, me, I just, there's that hole that you just, that that bolt just came out of. Just slide something, a pin, anything in there. And what that's for is just so it's not very hard to just take this. When you turn it, it'll stop. Because if you don't, let me show you what happens. You'll be fighting this. It'll turn and turn. If you just take something in here and in that hole, that mounting hole for the caliper, and then it just makes it easy because it stops it. And these things here can be a little hard. Then once it gets like that, pull it out. You're not hurting nothing. Then you take the torque bolt out. And the caliber will come right off of there. A soft mallet, just something. I mean, you're taking the rotors off, you can't hurt them hit with a hammer. But it just makes less noise. That's all you need to do. There we go. And that's just caused from a little bit of surface rust that's been collecting over time, you guys. Okay. Now we're ready to go ahead and we're ready to pay, able to put on the new, new rotor. And what I'd like to do is just kind of take a rag and kind of clean some of this surface stuff up. Okay. And before you put the rotor on, it's just something you can do. You don't have to, but it's just nice to kind of get a little bit. See what comes off of there? You can actually get really like Scott and get carried away. Knowing him, if I let him, he'd be in here painting these things. <laughs> but there you go. Now, just take the new rotor. All these rotors, when you get them in the kit, they have a little sticker right here. This one here says front passenger side. The one on the driver says has the same sticker, but it says driver side. And they're put on there for a reason. These are rotational, in other words, directional, whatever word you'd like to use. Directional, but there's yep. a certain way that they're supposed to go on because of the venting slits and the holes. This here's your little Torx bolt that goes right in that hole, so just line them up. Grab your little torques. Stick it back in there. You won't need to use that little pin idea that I had going through to get the torques off of this because you can just take it and go tighten it up. It's no big deal. This actually doesn't have to have any real strength on it. It's just there to line it up. There you go. Okay. Here, go behind the mounting on, on the A-arms. These here go behind it. Find your little bolt hole. Get myself lined up here. Let me give you some. There we go. Anyway, let me get that one started. The one at the top in. Okay. These here, I'm going to tighten up, up with a ratchet right now, and then I want to put a torque ridge on it and they say somewhere between 125 and 130 you get different ones different people do them at different when you ask people they always have their own opinion of it so yeah. anywhere between 125 and 130 should do right now I'm just instead of using a torque wrench to get these bolts in I'm doing it like this 
So guys, we saw, we looked it up on the Corvette forum. Uh, it was all over the map. We saw as uh, 89 seemed to be the actual number for the rear. Everyone agreed with that on the rear. Uh, the front ranged from 123 all the way up to 162. Um, when we took it off, it didn't seem like it had 162 pounds on it, so I don't think that's the case. So that's why we settled in. We're going to do it about 125. All right, I've already got a torque set on the, on the torque wrench. I'm just going to go and torque these down. Okay. And let's get to the top one. All right. That's done with that. Now the caliper's on. All right, we've greased the pads already with the grease that they give you. Now we're just gonna slide them in. One. And Terry, before you go any farther, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you grease the back, so you can see that. You mm -hmm. wanna grease this edge. And you don't have to have a lot of grease, just make sure that they get greased so the pad will actually move back and forth easily, but it still has a little bit that'll hold on to the, the piston so it won't chatter. All right. There you go. It went too far. <laughs> yeah, I know one thing, it's easier to get them out than it is to put them in. See? There you go. Okay. Now we're gonna put these springs in. What I did, remember the pins that I took out at the beginning? They were all crody and stuff. If you've got a wire wheel, just use a wire wheel on them, clean the stuff off. If you don't, these pads right here, just take and clean them off. Because what you don't want to use sandpaper, because you won't take none of the material off. You just want to just clean them up. Yep, so that's just a Brillo pad, right? Basically. Yeah. Yeah, Scotch Bright. Yeah, I want to, we're gonna I got the pins in. Is what I'm gonna do is you just slide this up in here and take this and slide it in. And line it up with the other one. Come on now. You're gonna be bad. There you go. Into the holes. Line up all the holes. There you go. You can see that little pointed thing go in there. Then just for right now, just take the hammer and just give it a little tap. Just so it kind of seats itself. You don't have to bang on it real hard either. Then on the bottom ones, you're going to have to push this down. This is a spring. You're going to push this down and run your pin in the back of it, through the other one, and in. Then you can always look in this little hole right here, and you'll see that little pin, so you'll know it's lined up. Then you take a hammer. Just tap it lightly and you can see it come through here and you can actually when it, the noise will change when you're hitting it with a hammer and you don't have to hit it hard. There you go. <laughs> it just sounds more solid, yeah. Yeah, and that's it. The calipers and brake pads are in. Rotors are on. Hey, We're set. we did it again. All right. Now we get to go to the back ones. All right. All right, we've done the front. Now we're going to the rear. It's basically the same thing. Actually, the rears are a little easier. You do the same thing with the pins. Just trying to get in there nice and close for them. Yeah, they're always in my way. <laughs> Yeah, guys, it's a lot easier to do this at home when you know, have cameras all over the place. And these pins in the back are a lot easier, but see what I was talking about? They got all this goop and drap and stuff on it. You got to wipe all that off. I have a uh, wire wheel that I clean them up on, but like I said, the same thing I did in the front. This, you just take a, a pad, I got it over there. And just clean it up with, with a scuff pad or skin. But don't use sandpaper. I'll say it again because what people do, they sand it down and you're taking the material off of it. It doesn't hurt it, but this clip right here, that's what locks that pin in there. So you don't want to do any, make sure you don't do anything to that. But this will just clean it up and it's easier to get in, easier to deal with when you're putting it all back together. Now I'll take the bottom pin out. Which they come out really easy. 
This we don't need anymore. And the pad. Right now is the time when you want to, is what you got to do is you have to pull the pads back to put the pucks back in. Sometimes you can take your fingers and pull them and you can feel them and you just keep going and let it go and hold it there for a second. And then go to the other side and do the same thing. And you just pull the old pads out. And since we're changing the rotors, we're going to take the caliber off. Okay, the calipers are basically the same. They got two bolts, just like in the front. They're smaller because the rear brakes on most cars are <coughs> smaller. Because actually in a vehicle, you're using your front brakes more than you do your rear in a passenger car. In race cars sometimes are a little different. That makes me wonder what the C, how the C8 is going to how it's going to eat brakes. Wonder if it's going to eat brakes the same way or. I, I would imagine so. It's a, this, the car's not going to make the difference in the brake package that they put on it. I don't know exactly what package they put on it, but I'm sure it's probably aggressive. Yeah. I'm sure okay. it will be. And there's that. This here's got a steel line on it that hangs on this. You can just kind of let it set right there. It won't hurt it. It's out of the way. Yeah, it's kind of sitting on that, uh, on that, the vent well, this ducting. This is just a piece yeah. of plastic. Right, yep. And it won't hurt it. Now we can go on this side. Okay. And take that same little here. Torx screw. Only this one here being on the rear end, you don't have to put that little pin thing through it to hold it. This one here is just... There you go. These here also, they have the emergency brake in the back of them. So they might be a little bit difficult to get off. Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. But there's a plate back there. You gotta make sure, right back in here, you can feel it, there's a, a backing plate. You, you don't wanna grab it there. But over here, it's kinda open. So if you can get it to, see? And uh -huh. then you can just kinda, walk it off yeah so guys you want to make darn sure terry terry touches on a great point you want to make sure that when you go to do your brake job you don't have your emergency brake set <laughs> <laughs> that, that wouldn't be fun that you're not getting no that hub off <laughs> now so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put this rotor up here and remember that hole that's where your torque screw goes right like that right here oh. you just line them up now this part here might be a little bit tricky. You gotta kind of walk, like you walked it off getting it off. You gotta kind of walk it on there. Cause the, the brake shoes. And it'll go on. Push torque screw back in. And these things here, you don't have to really yard on them. Just snug them up. They're just something to kind of actually just keep everything in line while you're putting everything together. If you didn't have this screw here, sometimes these are walking when you're putting the brake pads back in. It's kind of, makes it a little tougher. See, I don't need that anymore anyway. All right, I'm going to put the caliber back on. The rear brakes are... Basic, they're pretty easy. The front brakes just are a little tougher just because they're, they're actually a little bigger. But the whole principle is all the same, no different. Okay. Now these here, like we torqued the front ones. These here are like 80 to 85, something like that. that yeah, 80, 89. 89. 89. Yeah, everyone, everyone's in agreement on the rear ones. <laughs> that it's oh, okay. 89, 89 pounds. Okay, was that one. But the... Uh, Let me get my wrench. For some reason, for some reason they couldn't make a, a definitive answer on the, on the uh, front ones. I've already done this and set it, so it's okay. I'm pretty good just doing it by hand. And there's the top one. 
There we go. Good to go. All right. When you're putting these pads in, this little metal piece right here is supposed to be the pad on the outside. The reason for that is if you wanted to check to see what the brakes are, the depth of them, or how close it is to that little edge, this is like a gauge. It tells you when to change your brakes. If it's on the inside, I don't think you're going to be able to see it. So always make sure this tab is on the outside of the rotor on this side. Okay. Now, guys, we didn't mention it in the front pads because the front pads have indicators on both on both sides of the pad. So uh, that wasn't a big deal. But on the rear ones, they are the indicators are only on the what needs to be the outside pad. So and since the pads are exactly the same, uh, except for that, you could make the mistake and put it on the inside. You don't want to do that. OK, the, the pins are the same. Clean them up. Get all the goop and grab stuff off of it. Then you'll take and do the same thing, basically, that you did in the front. I always put kind of the top pin in. It's just easier for me. There you go. And this slides in here. I'm trying to stay away from it so you can see where it's all going. Line that up. Okay. At that point, I usually take with the hammer and just kind of give it a, a tap. Because what that does for me is just seats that one in here. Then, take the bottom one, squeeze the spring in. You just take your thumb and kind of push it in like so. Put your pin in. And take the hammer and just kind of seat it again. You can see how it seats itself. I just take and very gently tap this in. On the rear ones, you might be able to take your punch and just go to the back side because it, it, there's a lot of material here and you can't get the hammer to get flush. So just give it a little, just, you don't have to drive it in, just a, a little tap like that. There you go. Okay. Now the brake rear, they're done. Well, we're ready to put wheels on it now. There's the back brakes. We've done the front, we've done the back. I'm gonna go over next and do the ones on the driver's side. There's no sense it's the same procedure, it's no different, but why have you sit here for another half hour or so seeing the same thing? So is what I'm going to do is we're going to finish here. I'm going to go off camera and go over and finish the other sides and just get it done because it's New Year's Eve. Happy New Year's, everybody. And it's time to go get cleaned up and go play. <laughs> Thank you. You guys have a good year. And uh, the next decade is going to be a great one. So get ready for it. So guys, hopefully you found this video helpful and informative. So when it comes time that you want to do brakes on your C7, you'll have no problems doing it. Um, the part that I still have left to do, which I'm not going to film that part of it, is the actual break-in procedure. And you'll go ahead and in your box, when you, when you open it up, you'll have a card in there. that will actually explain to you exactly what you need to do for the break-in procedure. If your box doesn't come with it, go to PowerStop, PowerStopBreaks.com and they will have that on their website to be able to tell you exactly how you go about doing it. So um, I'm not going to give you for, for just the point of you being able to do it yourself. I'm not going to tell you how to do it. It's very simple. Just follow the instructions. You won't have any problems at all. So um, Jennifer's brakes are all done. I'm going to go ahead and I'll run it through the test itself and, and uh, break them in on my way home. I've got about a 70-mile uh, drive that, uh, that I'll have plenty of time to be able to, to break it in on my, on my way out of here. So anyway, um, as, you, as Terry's already told you, we were filming this on, on New Year's Eve. So um, I know that you'll be watching this video after that because it's going to be a few weeks before I get this, this edited. But uh, guys, hopefully you guys did all have a great Happy New Year. And I'm looking forward to being able to do, Terry and I are both looking forward to doing more videos for you guys. And hopefully any sponsor that happens to be watching, any manufacturer that would like to sponsor the channel, please reach out to me. 
Um, I'll put my information down on the screen here and then that way uh, we'll see if we can get your product up here and we'll get it tested. Uh, we've got, uh, between the amongst of us, we've got uh, plenty of C7s. We've got them in Z06, we've got them in Stingray, we've got them in Z51, we've got C5s, we've got C6s. So any of you manufacturers that have something that you'd like to see us uh, test, try out, compare, anything like that, reach out to me and let me know. Okay, again, guys, thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button and hit that bell so you'll be alerted of our next uploads. And again, thank you for, sponsor, thank you for supporting the channel today and thank you for watching.